Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, welcome to Pete Plays, I'm Pete Davison, uh, and today we're taking a look at Mode 7's new game Frozen Cortex. It's the follow-up to their previous title, Frozen Synapse, Synapse, however you pronounce it, I've never quite figured it out to be perfectly honest. Um, and much like that game, it's a very interesting take on turn-based strategy, in that it's not entirely turn-based in the same way you might be used to. Instead, both people who are participating in a match get to make their plans at the same time, and then you set them off and see what happens. And it's a beautifully chaotic way of playing that uh, forces you to really think about what your opponent's likely to do and plan ahead, even more so than you'd do in a standard turn-based game. Now, Frozen Synapse was um, a sort of turn-based take on the sort of mode you typically get in team-based shooters, so there were straight deathmatch modes, objective modes, and all sorts of things like that. Frozen Cortex, meanwhile, uh, used to be known as Frozen Endzone, and as that former title suggests, uh, it's a take on sports, future sports, which means robots throwing balls around, uh, or just one ball, to be perfectly honest, but you know, any opportunity to say the word balls. Um, the sport they're playing is vaguely reminiscent of American football, but it's got its own little twists and quirks, and the game has sort of been discussed and marketed uh, throughout its development as wanting to appeal to people who might not typically be interested in sports games. Much as Frozen Synapse ended up appealing to people who might not have traditionally been particularly interested in turn-based strategy games as well. So, the full version of the game is out today, incidentally, at the time uh, I am recording this. It's uh, been in early access for a while, uh, much like Frozen Synapse was. Uh, it's been undergoing a gradual process of development until it's reached the complete looking package that you see in front of you right now. Um, I'm just going to take a look at some of the single player modes today because, you know, multiplayer modes are reliant on other people being online and I can't guarantee that there'll be something fun to show you there. Uh, and also, I, to be perfectly honest, haven't had a chance to check out the single player modes myself yet. So. I think it's well worth doing that given that it's it's quite a big uh, draw to the game and one of the, the things that Mode 7 has been working on harder than anything else uh, just recently. So there's three different modes you can play single player in. There's a, a permadeath challenge where you have to try and get as far as you can without losing any matches, a long form season mode and a randomised league. And one thing that the guys at Mode 7 are pretty pleased with is uh, the sort of dynamic commentary system and the emergent stories that will uh, that will carry on as you're playing these modes. Uh, it's one thing I've been very curious to take a look at, so let's jump in and have a go. Let's try this knockout mode first of all. So, lose one match and you're out. So, standard difficulty, easy difficulty. Let's try standard mode. I'm not entirely confident in my own abilities, but you know, it starts women to go on. So, plot is happening. Those of you who played Frozen Synapse may well recall that that game also had a very strong multiplayer focus, but at the same time uh, it had a very strong single player mode with a very well written story as well with some fun characters and interesting things going on. So, let's find out what we're doing here. So, looks like we have our ability to set up our own team here, so let's well, let's stick with the defaults for now. Let's change some colours though. Let's be hot pink, that sounds nice. The alternate colours can be dark purple. Custom avatars. Let's have a nice scruffy beard, that'll do. A logo. A yeah, ghost. That'll do nicely. Gosh, there's a lot of customization going on here. That's that's really cool, actually. It gives you the opportunity to sort of distinguish yourself a bit in multiplayer matches, rather than the only real customization being uh, names and so on. You can even customize the individual player names as well. All right, let's see how we go then. I guess to customize our name anyway, so let's let's replace my username with Pete. There we go. And continue on to the event. 
Okay, it's going to force us to play the shooter. I did actually play this earlier on, but it'll be a good means of introducing how the game works anyway. So let's take a look at the tutorial. Hopefully you can hear the music again in the background. A real highlight of Mode 7's games has been the uh, the uh, Electronica soundtrack from Nervous Test Pilot, which is actually one of the developers under a pseudonym. So, this is the ball. Very good. We need to go to the end zone for seven points. That's pretty straightforward. There's also bonus point scoring opportunities from these score zones here if you run through them with the ball. So the rules are pretty simple. Uh, and actually the, the execution of the game is pretty simple as well. It's a lot more straightforward than even Frozen Synapse was. It's pretty much just sort of running and making sure you're in the optimum position to pull certain things off. So, here we go. So as you play you'll see that each turn is split into a planning phase first of all where you can uh, sort of figure out what you're going to do and what your opponent might be doing as well. Uh, you set waypoints for your team members and that's what they're going to do. You can set multiple waypoints as well, delete them and so on. Have a look over the, the rest of the pitch. Zoom in and out. And get a nice tactical overview or a close-up view. And this is one of the nice things that was in Frozen Synapse as well. So you can basically order your opponent's uh, team members around. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to do what you expect them to when you uh, when the actual turn comes, but you can sort of conjecture what they might be up to and make your plans accordingly. So you can see there, there's one of the key mechanics there. If someone is standing still, they will block a player that's coming towards them. So if that opponent does decide to come running for me, uh, the one that is currently standing there, just here, uh, will keep them out of the way. Okay, much like Frozen Synapse, you have the opportunity to sort of delay the start of moves as well, so you can uh, set up some, some pretty complex manoeuvres, even with these very straightforward tools. Okay, so, you know, pick up the ball. Now, unlike Frozen Synapse, which had sort of set lengths of turns, uh, in Frozen Cortex there are sort of variable length turns depending on what happens in there. So, a turn will end when something significant happens. So, in this case, it will be uh, grabbing the ball. In the meantime, we can set up some plans for other people to uh, to do. People, robots, robots are people too, you know. And we can figure out what they're likely to do. So, and then when we're done, we press Prime confirm what we've done. If we were playing multiplayer we'd have to wait for our opponent to also press prime before we get the uh, the outcome. But since we're playing just a tutorial on single player at the minute, here's what happens. Okay, so I grabbed the ball. That's pretty much all that happened. So we can throw the ball. the opponents can intercept it if we throw it at them. Each player has their own stats which determines the range at which they can block and intercept balls and so on. So you can see that they've each got their own speed rating and so on as well. Let's get rid of that order. And we'll make a run for it. So let's go there first, then there, and then continue down there. So that's what it should look like, assuming no one gets in my way in the meantime. There we are, there's an interception. If you get too close to an enemy, so marked by these blue circles around each enemy, um, they will chase you down and try and intercept you as well. 
And much like blocking, it's the, the first person to stop moving and sort of win any conflict like that. So it's in defenders' interest to get themselves into strategically advantageous positions as soon as possible so that they can block and intercept opponents who might be running past them. Now we have a comprehensive help thing that I've read earlier, so I won't bore you with that right now. Alright, so let's continue our, or start our season rather, and give it a go. Plot is happening again. Okay, so this is just setting up the uh, the permadeath mode, the elimination mode. So theoretically, if we do well, we can get rewarded with new stuff. Uh, but if we lose, then you know we are fucked, basically. Is it Bob Jansky? a nice bit of history of the game, putting it in context. Again, that's one thing that Mode Seven's always been quite good at, is uh, giving a nice bit of narrative context to what could otherwise be quite a, an abstract sort of game. Like Frozen Synapse in particular was very abstract with its presentation. It was all sort of uh, little green men versus little red men, but they managed to spin that into something that was actually quite interesting and compelling in the process, and uh, looks like they're, they're doing something very similar here. Gonna get to play yet? Okay, so we're playing against the Turek Foundation in our first game. And this is our opponent. Okay, nice bit of antagonization from the opponents. Let's jump in and play. So over on the right of the screen we've got the uh, the dynamic commentary system that the, the guys at Mode 7 are pretty excited about. I saw an early version of this in an early access version last year, but uh, it's apparently come on quite considerably since then. Our opponent's talking to us as well, that's cool. Alright, so we have 12 turns until the end of the game to presumably score as many points as possible. So, where's the ball? It's up there. Okay, let's send him on a run for it. It's a pretty obvious move to make, but let's get him in the way. Get some of these other players covered as well. Try and cover some of our routes across the field. So they're going to take a beating, but it might distract the uh, the other players enough to allow us to do something useful. Let's see what happens. Uh oh, that's not good. Alright, so our opponent has grabbed the ball. What we need to do now then is try and block him. So he's probably going to try and pass to this guy over here because you can throw over low blocks but not over high ones. So we need to try and intercept that if at all possible. So let's cancel that plan that he had. Let's try and move him in the path of where that throw is likely to be. 
He may also try and throw through that gap there. I don't know if he'll be able to manage that, but let's check the visibility line. No, so he can't throw through that corner there. That's useful to know. Let's let's leave that chap there for the minute. Maybe this guy can come a bit more centrally, so he can cover some more ground. I can move out a little bit. Let's see what happens. System Prime. And doing all this with the caveat that I'm terrible at strategy games, have no concept of forward planning, and I'm just generally awful. Uh, but you know, it might be entertaining to watch, you never know. Let's find out. So he's thrown over there. Yellow's gone and picked it up. Alright. Okay, so he's clearly going to try and get down the side now. Either that or throw across there. So if we pop him in front there like that. Let's bring him out there as well. Maybe a little more this way. This guy's not being very useful at the minute, so we'll bring him down to do some more blocking down here. Or perhaps move him there and move this guy down instead System Prime. and Prime and he's thrown down there and he's running straight for the end zone, of course he is how oh, very embarrassing but okay, now we know now to watch down the uh, down the side of the pitch because there's nothing blocking down there, which uh, I should have probably probably noticed really. So that's my own fault, really, isn't it? Oh dear. All right. So now what? That's a good question. Where's the ball? On that dude? Ah, we start a new play. Well, something happened anyway. Alright, let's try not to be quite so grossly incompetent this time. So that guy is going to be most likely to run there, isn't he? So let's assume that he's running straight for that. Right, he'll still kick me in the face if I don't get there first, so let's... There we go, right. Meantime, let's move this chap to where the other runner was going. We'll pop him there. System Prime. That's my dude. That's promising. I'm a big fan of the uh, the sort of c cinematic camera angles that it's using when you. Uh, and you actually prime your turn and see what the outcome is. This is uh, a big change from Frozen Synapse which was completely two-dimensional. It was top-down all the way through so even when you saw the outcome of what you were doing you were still looking at little dudes running around on a map from a top-down view. So this is a, a big step up in presentation for Mode 7. Alright, what to do now? So we need to get that ball away from him preferably. So we throw across there. There's a risk of that being intercepted. Let's assume that he runs to there as well. So what will happen if that happens? He'll catch it. Maybe. Hopefully. Possibly. Let's get this guy into the middle. This guy's being fairly useless at the minute, isn't he? Hmm, uh, we'll 
move him just over a little bit, ready to potentially receive another throw from over there. Okay, let's see what happens. There's a lot of that in this game, seeing just what happens. Here we go. Good luck, boys. It's a catch. Nice. I've got an achievement for that. Right, now, we're not quite positioned correctly to throw that, unfortunately. That's disappointing. Hmm. May have put myself in a slightly difficult position because you can't run and then pass. That's one of the uh, one of the rules you have to deal with in this. So, given that he's there and that line of sight is being blocked by that large block that's in the way, it could potentially cause a problem. Oh well, we're just going to have to try and deal with it, I guess. So. Maybe if we move no, move him over there. And he can fling that over there maybe. There's a risk of these guys going and intercepting that of course, but we can uh, we can see what might happen. Let's okay, let's let's just assume that they're gonna run in that direction. Are they gonna intercept that? No, my dude should be able to catch that. Bring him back into play there. He can go there. Alright. Good luck, guys. Just a throw and a catch. Okay. Alright, not going terribly. there. Let's bring this guy down as well just in case. System Prime. I'm still not confident. But let's see. It's a catch. Right, that guy's got quite a wide chase range. So we need to keep out of his way, ideally. So, should I throw it to this guy? Or should we just make a run for it? Oh, let's see. He can very much get in range of him. So maybe we don't do that. passes remaining. Maybe I am going to have to run for it. Okay, well, you know, nothing ventured and all that. Let's take a detour via that scoring zone. I mean, we might at least get a couple of points out of it. System primed. Okay, we cannot run backwards. Alright, so we can't do that. Right. It's a very sort of sporty rule. System Prime. Not confident. Gonna get tackled. There we go. Ooh. Right, so now we have to try and get that ball back if at all possible. Let's 
try and figure out where he might be likely to throw that to you and try and get in the way of it. System Prime. Liar, that's 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 a disappointing outcome, but you know we can uh, we can pull it back, maybe, possibly, probably not. I can try. You go there. I feel like I'm not using these players effectively. Got three turns until the end of the match. I think I'm probably going to be knocked out at this rate. That's 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 oh. a catch. Damn it! <laughs> yes, a crushing defeat for me, very much. Alright, well that is a match of Frozen Cortex, played spectacularly incompetently by me. Um, at the end of the game, uh, just like in Frozen Synapse, you have the opportunity to actually uh, take a video of your match and send it directly to YouTube from within the game, which is a nice little touch. Uh, you can also check a full replay, uh, save those replays, uh, and if you play multiplayer you can sort of do replays of past games as well and try and analyse where you were going wrong. Uh, which was, in my case, pretty much everywhere. So, let's continue. And uh, deal with the embarrassment that, that comes along with all that. But anyway, hopefully that's given you an idea of how Frozen Cortex works and whether you might be interested in giving it a go. The nice thing about it is you'll see that it's... Um, it's actually quite simple to play. The rules are very simple to understand and uh, the, the actual mechanics are, are very straightforward to start with. Um, but it's actually applying those strategies in a meaningful way that is the challenging part of that. So it's a game you'll probably need to practice that a bit, but it's also very accessible. It looks very nice. It's got great music. So if you're the slightest bit interested in something a little bit different then I highly recommend you take a look at this. Like I say it's out today on Steam, it's full version, it's 1.0 version, it's been in early access for a while and the uh, the complete version is now coming at you. So take a look, this is Mode 7 Games Frozen Cortex, you've been watching Pete Plays, I've been Pete Davison, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.